This is rhino country, miles of shrubland dotted with mapani trees and the spindle-thin euphorbia bush, poisonous to almost every animal except the one we're looking for. We're journeying across Namibia in search of the rare black rhino, a unique holiday experience. And although the beast is stubbornly elusive, our travels have already proved inspiring. Day three takes us to the privately owned Ongaba Game Reserve in the northwest of the country. To whet our appetite, our guide takes us first to an area popular with white rhino. This is the right area to find them. At the moment, uh, there is, uh, should be about six of them, just in this area around. In the, it's not that hard. We stop just meters from the massive beasts. A day later, a glimpse of what we're really after, an animal which 25 years ago was virtually extinct. Then there were just 60 black rhino in the whole of Namibia. Now there are 200, thanks largely to joint efforts by conservationists and tour operators. Close to the Ongava Game Reserve, holidaymakers can learn about research projects and the monitoring and management of the rhino population. In the Kanini region, the tour operator Wilderness Safaris funds further preservation work. Here, the rhino shares its homeland with the desert-adapted elephant, creatures a lot less shy than the rare beasts we're after. Some of the rhinos you find here, like Ben and, and, and Desiree, they're old rhinos. They've been left over for the, from the poachers in the early 70s. So that's why most of the time they keep on running away if they hear the vehicle or they try to be in these in this thicket areas where there's nobody going to see them. The rhinos aren't tagged either because of the distress it causes. So if tourists want to see them, they have to rely on the skill of local trackers. What we have around here is a, a rhino footprint. The guests get the unique opportunity of seeing how these guys track black rhino, skills they've learnt since they grew up in this area. And it's a, it's a dying art. Here you see the local guy from the local community gaining, first of all, employment by applying his local skills and then showing that to the guest. It is a unique experience. On the last day, we were still yearning for that ultimate sighting, in the open, not a reserve. Suddenly, there was word from the trackers. We set off at speed, even though it was almost dusk. Finally, success, although we weren't allowed to get too close. After a few minutes filming, the trackers asked me to withdraw, an indication of the potential conflict involved in funding conservation through tourism. Save the Rhino needs visitors' money, but also wants them to keep their distance. Some of the tourists actually wants to go closer. Others don't want. They understand actually the seriousness of the case. This is a very open place and, and it's very difficult for a Rhino to, to, to try and hide from people. And if they have to run, they run very long distances, which can be very harmful to babies. It is a, a discerning traveller that comes to a place like this. This is not in the least a black rhino safari or a big game safari. We um, want to bring home the message of, a, of rhino conservation taking place in the area, and that is the focus on our safari. It may sound a bit idealistic, but it seems to be working. Conservation projects funded by guest stays at the camp have led to a threefold increase in black rhino. And for tourists, well, there's a warm welcome and the knowledge that the company taking their money is doing its bit too, foregoing some of its profits to protect one of the world's most endangered species. Black rhino.